Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to see how can we identify a LFI vulnerability onto a given particular web application. So it is the practical time and let's quickly jump on to the practical to see how can we actually identify and exploit this vulnerability. So as you can see over here, I'm onto a target application which is testphp.vulnweb.com. And once I'm onto this particular website, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up burp suit with this website. As you can see, I'm running on to the latest version of burp suit, which is 2020.9.1. Now I have also been running one burp suit instance of 1.7.34. So basically I'm running two instances of burp suit just to differentiate between both the burp suit versions and how they work and how we can utilize them for identifying LFI based vulnerabilities. So because of limited options into burp 2.0 that we cannot crawl or use spider onto the target web application, I'm going to demonstrate this attack with the help of burp 1.x version, which can be freely downloaded from the both Sugar website. All right. So once I have set it up, the Burp Suite 1.7 version with my target browser, that is Mozilla Firefox, I'm going to intercept this particular application and I'm going to bring the particular request in Burp, as you can see onto your screen. Now I will just reload this and you can see I have got the successful request over here. Now I'll simply right click and click on repeater because I want to use this request later on. Also, I will again right click and send this to spider. I'm sending this to spider because I want as many as endpoints for this specific target. Remember, if I'm increasing the scope for my target, that means I may get a lot of parameters that may turn out to be vulnerable and I can identify a valid LFI based vulnerability. That's why putting this to spider is very important. Now, it sometimes may ask you to submit the forms it come across onto any target web application. If you want to submit this, you can submit with some random or junk data or you can simply ignore it. For now, I'm going to ignore this form. All right, now let's go back to target and you can see this is my target web application on which I'm performing a test and trying to identify a valid LFI based vulnerability. Now, I will just right click over here and click on add to scope. I have already done this before and this is added to my scope. Remember, whenever you're sending any target application for spidering, it will ask you to add to scope. As I've already done this, you can see now it is showing an option which is remove from scope. All right, so once we have done this, I'm going to again send this to spider just to crawl more endpoints so that we get more parameters and our, scope, and our scope gets increased. Now you can see over here, here are all the particular URLs which have been crawled. Now I'm going to filter them based on parameters or you can say I'm going to sort them based on parameters. So you can see over here, here are all the parameters that can be seen or all the endpoints that can be seen for a target web application. Now. If you're testing onto an application which has multiple endpoints or has a very big scope, there would be thousands of URLs that will be crawled by Burp Suite. And in those circumstances, it may get difficult for you to choose each URL one by one to identify which one to test. Now, for that, what you can do is you can simply use the Burp search feature. How to do that? Just go in Burp and click on search. Now. As we know, there are some of the specific set of injection points or vulnerable parameters for LFI based vulnerability. And you can simply search those vulnerable parameters. I'm going to attach the list of vulnerable parameters into the description wherein you can download it and you can identify those parameters as well. Now, one of the parameter is file equals to. This parameter means that my target web application is going to show a file that can be any file. 
let's say it is a PDF file, a JPG file, a PNG or an audio file. So the file is stored onto the target server and it is going to give that file to any user when the user wants, wants that particular file. So what if instead of that particular file, we request for something else to the target server? Maybe if there is a vulnerability, we may get that intended file by the attacker. So let's quickly identify these parameters if they do exist or no. Over here, you can see I'm choosing the option which is case sensitive and the locations is only request headers because I want this parameter in my request headers and request body, not in the response. Why? Because in the request itself, I'm going to request for another file, which is etc pass wd, etc shadow or something which is sensitive and attacker can take advantage of. Now you can see over here, you can check or uncheck based on from where you want to scan it. So let's say target proxy repeater. So I'm going to keep these settings as default. You also don't need to change anything over here. Now just hit on go. Once you hit on go, you can see you are able to get all the endpoints of the target, which was testphp.volanweb.com. And these all URLs are coming from the target tab. As you can see over here, they are under the sitemap, which we have already crawled and saved. Now you can identify, yes, it matches a particular parameter, which is file equals to over here. Now I'm going to choose one of these and send it to repeater because I want to try LFI on these particular requests or these particular parameters. So here you can see this is an image which is getting loaded from the server because the request looks something like get show image dot PHP and file equals to the image name. Here the image is one dot JPG and on the right hand side, you can see the rendered response of 1.jpg and it looks something like this. Now, what if instead of this 1.jpg file, I want to include something else, let's say something sensitive from that specific server. So what I'm going to include is etc pass wd file. Remember this pass wd file is considered sensitive for any server because it contains the name of the users and the attacker is able to enumerate the names of the users onto that particular server, which is running. So you can see over here, I'm going to send a request and you can see we got an error. Now I'm going to add dot dot slash and you're able to see successfully, I'm able to see the past WD file. Now, why did I add the dot dot slash? That is only because to get one step out of that particular directory or go one step back of that particular directory. And you can see over here, I'm successfully able to see the past WD file into my response. Now this is considered as sensitive because now I can read any other files I want from the target web server. I hope you guys understood how you can also identify LFI based vulnerabilities from any target web application if the input is not sanitized and anyone is allowed to read any sensitive files from vulnerable parameters like file equals to onto any target web application. Thank you.